Hi guys, welcome to the Proof of Wolf channel. It's time for you to learn how to do on-chain analysis. Unlike chart analysis that only looks at the behavior of the Bitcoin price, on-chain analysis looks at what is happening under the hood. The Bitcoin blockchain is 100% auditable, so you can evaluate everything that is happening. Each Bitcoin transaction contains a lot of useful information such as which address sent and which received. How long has it been since this address moved its bitcoins? How many bitcoins were there at that address and how many are left? At what price were bitcoins received by that address in the past before the current transaction? And so on. Our goal in this video will be to learn how to interpret this data knowing the most important indicators about the behavior of the network. Are you ready? Let's start with a very simple indicator to make it easier. The number of active addresses counts the total amount of addresses that have sent or received Bitcoin. If we select the daily chart period, it means that the indicator will show the total number of active addresses on each day. In the short term this indicator is useful to reveal sudden retail interest or disinterest, while in the long term this indicator signals the level of adoption. In this image, the black curve represents the Bitcoin price and the yellow curve represents the indicator. Let's look at the short term first. Moments of strong price spikes are marked by sudden increases in the number of active addresses, signaling that possibly a very large amount of people are trading. I say possibly because in this case we are not seeing the cause of the transaction, we only know the fact that transactions have taken place. This indicator can be used in conjunction with the new addresses indicator. When the Bitcoin price goes up a lot, many newcomers decide to enter the market, so this is probably the cause of the sudden increase in addresses at peak prices. So it is worth keeping an eye on the increase in the level of new addresses and active addresses in the short term in bull cycles, comparing with previous scenarios to prevent bubble bursts and price spikes. In the long term these indicators show the level of adoption of the network, as the total number of active addresses and new addresses in the network signals whether the project has tended to attract more people over time. In this case it is a good idea to analyze longer graphical periods such as the monthly graph. I have shown here graphs generated by the Glassnode platform, but at the end of this series I will give a hint of places where you can find indicators on chain on free and paid platforms. Still in the analysis of addresses, we can evaluate the famous relationship between whales and sardines. We do this by looking at the total balance that each address has. For example, we can count how many addresses in the Bitcoin network have more than 1000 Bitcoins. That number indicates the total number of whales in the market. Similarly, we can look at the total number of addresses with balance greater than zero. When the number of addresses with balance greater than zero falls and the number of addresses with more than 1000 bitcoins rises, it means that whales are probably buying bitcoins from sardines. If you can't see this effect, just think of a large investor who already owns 900 bitcoins and added another 100, becoming an address with over 1000 bitcoins. If those extra 100 bitcoins purchased were acquired from sardines, a very large amount of addresses with few bitcoins disappeared as they were transferred to this large investor address. There are several ways to observe this dynamic, it does not necessarily have to be with the magic number of 1000 bitcoins per address. It is even possible to track the volume of bitcoins in addresses with more than 100 bitcoins instead of the amount of addresses with more than 1000 bitcoins. These are different ways of looking at the same principle, so here's a tip, an experienced analyst will always look as broadly as possible. If a specific whales versus sardines relationship is showing up using some metric, it is important that this movement is also consistent when varying the metrics a bit, otherwise the theory will not be valid. For example, if comparing non-null addresses versus addresses with over 1000 bitcoins signals something, yet when switching to addresses with over 0.01 bitcoins versus addresses with over 100 bitcoins this is not evident, it is possible that the first graph crossing is a coincidence or noise. Also note that there are caveats. Internal moves between exchange addresses can pollute the charts quite a bit. 
Some investors may also redistribute their bitcoins in different wallets. All this is mixed in these indicators. Another detail is that, as the price of bitcoin increases, a smaller amount of BTCs is needed to store the same dollar amount, so comparing very distant time horizons may not be accurate due to the lack of normalization in this indicator. Did it get difficult? Relax, the next indicators will be simpler to interpret. Note that, often, the indicator itself is simple but its interpretation is complex and vice versa. Just use in your analysis indicators that you feel comfortable in interpreting. So let's proceed with a very cool indicator called SUP. It compares the price that Bitcoin was at the time of creation and spending of a spent Bitcoin output. In other words, it's like dividing the price sold by the price paid. After all much of the Bitcoin transactions represent a trade where one user transfers Bitcoins to another. The moment of transferring Bitcoins can be considered the sale. Before transferring, one must have acquired those Bitcoins. As everything is recorded on the blockchain, we have the date of each transaction. Then by calculating the sold price divided by the purchased price of all Bitcoins in a given time period, we have an indication of the average profit or loss of all transactions. The value of 1 for SUP represents the break-even point. If the SUP is above 1, it means that most of the volume traded made a profit. If SUP is below 1, it means that more loss is being made. Looking at the historical chart of SUP, it is very interesting to observe bull and bear market behaviors. In the bull market, the SUP stays most of the time above 1, and when there is some correction in prices the fact that the SUP returns to the region of 1 indicates the end of the correction and resumption of the bull cycle. One explanation for this phenomenon may be the psychological effect of investors. Those who are in profit are tempted to sell to put their profit in their pocket, which generates a selling force. However, when there are few people making profits and the bull market sentiment is still in vogue, greed takes over again, with the buying force overcoming the remaining weak selling force, resuming the bullish trend. The opposite occurs in the bear market, when a sub value of 1 represents for investors an opportunity to exit the market without losses which ends up being very tempting for those who were losing. To eliminate noise and have more solidity, it is common to use a moving average of 7 or 14 days in the analysis of the SUP. Besides being useful to indicate good entry points in medium-term operations, the SUP also serves to signal the end of a bullish or bearish cycle. Generally when the SUP reaches very high values, such as above 1.04, it indicates overbought, indicating that the bullish cycle is near its end. The same occurs in bearish cycles for values near 0.96. But perhaps even more relevant than the raw value is how long the SUP stays too high or low, because at the end of moves it is common to have a disproportion in the SUP which takes off from previous moves by gravitating around more extreme values. Look at the 2017 cycle, when the SUP took off to the upside, then corrected by still staying away from point 1 and moving back up. That was a sign of extreme euphoria. The same occurred in the January to April 2021 period. Besides SUP we also have NUP, which stands for net unrealized profit, or even relative unrealized profit depending on which on-chain data platform we are using. The unrealized profit is calculated based on all unspent outputs compared to the current price. First you separate all bitcoins that are in profit, i.e. those whose last move was at a price lower than the current price. Then you calculate the dollar profit that all these coins represent and divide by the market cap. This indicator is very good for signaling global tops and bottoms, i.e. ends of large cycles. Note that the 0.32 region signaled Bitcoin price bottoms very well, while the region above 0.74 signaled tops very well. The psychological explanation of the NUP is simple, when investors are sitting on a lot of unrealized profit, the temptation to sell ends up being great. The main difference of NUP compared to SUP is that one measures unrealized profit while the other accounts for realized trades. High NUP means that investors are holding a large profit potential that has not yet been executed. High SUP means that investors are making profits on their operations. 
remembering that another difference is that SUPRA includes profits and losses in its calculation, while NUP only considers the portion that is in profit. An important caveat about the NUP is that it is polluted by lost coins. Bitcoins that were lost a long time ago count the NUP as if there is a lot of unrealized profit, when in reality these coins do not represent investors being tempted to sell. But despite this inaccuracy, the NUP so far has served as a good indicator of major cycles. Just as there is the NUP there is also the NUL, which is the net unrealized loss. It is calculated in the same way as NUP, but for the unrealized loss. This indicator is useful to signal the end of a down cycle, when its value gets too high. For bullish cycles it is not very useful in terms of global peaks, since historical highs in prices mean that there is no Bitcoin in loss, so the NUL is reset to zero. By dividing NUP by NUL, we have NUPL, which stands for Net Unrealized Profit Loss. This indicator is interesting because it takes into account the current situation of unrealized profit and loss at the same time. Observing the historical chart some regions have been created. Below the zero value for NUPL represents capitulation, where only the bravest investors are buying, when everything is at rock bottom. The orange region, between zero and 0 0.24, means hope when the capitulation period is already behind or fear that things will get worse when the previous period was bullish. The yellow region, from 0 0.24 to 0 0.49, represents optimism when the movement is bullish or anxiety when the movement is bearish. From 0 0.49 to 0 0.73 there is belief in bullish movements or denial in bearish movements. Above 0 0.73 there is only greed, a moment that does not usually last long. And to finish this introductory series of on-chain data, we could not fail to mention supply last active. This indicator can be calculated for different periods, such as 3 months, 6 months, 1 year, etc. Basically the idea is to measure how many bitcoins in total have not been moved. For example, supply last active 1 plus measures how many bitcoins have not been moved for a year or more. The result is measured as a percentage, indicating how many percent of the circulating supply of bitcoins has been idle for more than a year. This indicator is very relevant as it clearly represents who the hodlers are. For example, who has not moved his bitcoins for more than a year is probably a person who thinks about the long term. Statistically speaking, it has been observed that bitcoins not moved for more than 155 days are very likely to go quite a long time without being moved. On the other hand, bitcoins that have been moved recently are likely to be moved again. This differentiates the behavior of hodlers and speculators. So by fairly separating the two profiles, we can compare the chart of bitcoins that have not been moved for more than 6 months with the chart of bitcoins that have been moved for less than 3 months to get a good idea of how many hodlers and speculators there are in the market. Note that when the number of hodlers is very high in relation to speculators, this signals price bottoming, indicating that there is few speculators in the market, who are people wanting to profit in the short term, and only long term investors left. As long-term investors do not sell their coins easily, this generates some scarcity in the market and prices rise again. On the other hand, when prices start to get high, long-term investors start to sell their coins to make profits, so the percentage of hodlers falls. When there are too few hodlers in the market and too many speculators, this signals a price top, as there is too much short-term greed. As speculators do not hold on to their coins for long, any loss motivates them to sell, which causes massive falls in prices. In general, hodlers represent the smart money, which buys in the low and sells in the high, while speculators represent the dumb money, which buys in the high and sells in the low. Although I have brought in this video some explanations about the movement of indicators, keep in mind that explanations involving psychology are subjective, besides being inaccurate by nature. For example, when an investor moves bitcoins from one wallet to another, both in his possession, this updates various indicators, which will interpret that a sale has occurred, which in fact has not.
the on-chain indicators try to extract meaning by considering the average of the transactions, hoping that the noise will cancel out or be irrelevant, but this does not always happen, especially when considering short time periods, but it is undeniable that in general on-chain indicators bring a lot of valuable information about the behavior of investors on the network. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Soon we will have the continuation of this series explaining more on-chain indicators. Also check out my Twitter. See you soon.